guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar show one more time. Um, I bought this guy for you guys to show you guys. So I would appreciate it if you comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. As, uh, as it is in the channel, I do not make a red cent yet. And um, hard to buy stuff all the time just to make a video. So I am approaching from the time of making this um, almost 500 uh, subs. So I would appreciate if you guys like my videos, uh, subscribe to me. Thank you. Okay, so I just got this guy in, and it's a little bit similar to uh, one I did about, well, I think when I release this video, it's probably going to be about an one and a half year since the last one that was similar. So the one I'm talking about is the Skywatcher Heritage 130. Now this is something similar. It's a Zumel uh, 130, but it's a little bit different. So I wanted to show you guys this. So I'm just unboxing it. And let's see. Uh, now this box is at least twice as big as the Skywatcher Heritage uh, 130, even though it's the same size. So let me get it out of there. So as you guys can see, it's a tabletop, or maybe you can't see it yet, um, but it's basically a five inch, 130 millimeter, 5.1 inch actually, F5 reflecting telescope on one of those, what they call the uh, Dobsonian base. So, let me just get all the plastic out first. Now really all these type of telescopes, this one, the name is called a Zummel. However, they're all made in really the same factories. Uh, there's only really, I think, three factories that uh, deal with the telescopes and optics. So they're really all, all the same. It's just every company, um, depending which factory is making it, they just uh, put their name on it and that's basically it. Now, again, this one is slightly different because, as you can see, it's a solid tube version. Actually, let me see if I can get that camera a little bit closer in one second. Let me tie everything down first. just put the rings on so it doesn't uh, actually a little bit higher I think like that and yeah let me definitely get you guys closer so you can see the scope a little better I think that's okay like that okay but this one's a solid tube version now the difference is also as you guys saw, let me see if I can, it's on there a bit tight, wow. Now this version has rings and a dovetail. And let me put this back, then I can talk to you. Now the difference is this guy is, is actually a little longer. Also, as you can see, this one has four veins. So again, it's a solid tube version. It has a inch and a quarter rack and pinion focuser. It's a little stiff, but you know what? That's, that's okay. And the reason is I don't notice too much slop. Well, then that means basically the focuser uh, moving. Um, even though it's a little rough, it has no slop. It's pretty good. It uh, has a central uh, donut at the very middle so when you collimate uh, I'm not sure if you can see that when you collimate you can actually get the laser or whatever easier um, it has this Dobsonian again this is a press board uh, which is not my favorite type of thing but you have two type of handles one here and one here um, the cap just has an inner cap here and what you could do with that is if you're looking at the moon that's like really bright 
you can put that in between uh, the veins and that way you can get a little bit more contrast uh, type of thing. Um, and instead of it being F5, you might turn it into uh, maybe like F10, uh, F12. Um, also, if you have a solar filter film, what you can do is hot glue it. I actually did a video how to use or how to make a solar filter from solar film. Check it out if you guys like, but you can make this a solar filter and then you can look at the sun. I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna see if I can flip the camera upwards uh, just because I sometimes feel I wanna get closer but it cuts off my head. So I'll be back. Okay, so I think that might be better, I'm not sure. So basically this is what a, and it's a tabletop, um, uh, you know, Dobsonian. So basically again, you have to move it by hand up and down and then left and right type of thing. You might need, um, as I said, in uh, other Dobsonian mounts, this one's a tabletop Dob Dobsonian mount. You still might need a table. Okay, actually my stool, <laughs> it's actually loose right now and it's too wobbly. Um, that's the other thing you guys have to worry about when you have it on a tabletop type of um, a stool or a tabletop. It has to be rock solid because if it's going to shake, you're going to see all that's going to be even amplified in the eyepiece. Now remember too, some people might think minor shakes is not a big deal, but just take into consideration if it's moving one millimeter, which isn't that much anyway, but if you're at 100 times power, that's almost equivalent to it moving 100 millimeters. 200 millimeters if you're at 200 power and so on. So you do definitely want to put it on a solid uh, base. Take it also into consideration the one downfall that I don't like about all dobs, uh, more, uh, well actually it doesn't matter, yeah I guess all dobs, uh, but maybe a slightly more uh, the tabletop version is that uh, you have to add the cost of that stool or that solid, um, you know, table. I have heard on the, you know, on the forums, some people just say you get a 20 liter like um, pail that's left over. It could be a paint pail uh, or just whatever, 20 liter pail, flip it upside down. I, you know what? I guarantee you that's not going to be solid at all. Or they say like a Rubbermaid type of thing and you flip it over. There's no way that's going to be um, solid and steady. Um, I mean, basically they're saying that just to say that, you know, to raise it, is, it costs almost nothing. They're, they're giving you an alternative to something, uh, you know, that you could use. But I guarantee you there's no way it's solid. And if it's not solid, it, it, same with a tripod. If your tripod is like, uh, if you have... Uh, a big scope on an EQ1 or on a um, camera tripod and it's shaking and it's not steady, you're, you're going to get the same result. It doesn't matter, uh, table, tripod, whatever. You need a rock a steady uh, mount. So that's the one thing take into consideration. Now, this guy is only about uh, 16, 18 inches from the ground. And as you can see, it's really not high enough for me as well. So uh, you probably would need something 24 to uh, 36 inches, depending on your height, uh, for you to observe at a proper, you know, adult height. Um, you know, this is a little bit more portable, I, I guess, uh, by not having a full height base, uh, Dobsonian base, but you gotta take that into consideration, the cost of that. But anyway, that's what this guy is. Um, I, do I do like how you can, uh, take has rings and has a Vixen bar, um, if you really wanted to, take it out of here if you don't really like this press board base. A couple things you could do. Trace it out, buy some nice hardwood, plywood, stain it a nice and whatever color you want to stain it, and it'll actually look better. Because over time, these particle board, press board, uh, just with like vinyl, uh, vinyl uh, over it and painted uh, whatever color, doesn't last that long. Might only last... Depends how often you use it, depends how much moisture gets into it, uh, etc. You know, between five to 10 years, the base is probably most likely gone, unless it's inside 
forever and you never use it, then it might last uh, 20 years. But anyway, uh, it just doesn't hold up well to moisture and, and wet, any wet, damp areas. Now on the back side, it does have uh, to collimate the mirror there. Um, it's not the best. Sometimes I prefer like thumb screws um, and sometimes they have uh, the better ones will have locking screw and the collimation screw. So it would have six in total instead of just three. But for this little guy, it's not too, it's not too bad. Um, anyway, that's what this is. It, it feels like it's, you know, it's like every other daub. It doesn't have too much friction, but it doesn't, it's not quite smooth enough. And otherwise it, you know, they need to have some type of friction on here. Otherwise it just doesn't move perfect. Too much, uh, if it's too smooth, it might just fall, depending what accessories you have up here. Camera, big eyepiece, and a finder, maybe a secondary finder. It, it uh, you know what I mean? So there ha it's never 100% smooth. Um, and that's what you get. You do have a tension knob here. So if you wanna make it a little bit more smoother, or, or but it's not bad overall. Uh, anyway, so that's what a five inch F5, um, reflecting telescope on a Dobsonian base. Now, uh, it is a parabolic mirror, which is way better uh, than the spherical mirror at F4 or F5. Uh, let me get the accessories and see what comes with it so you guys can see. One more thing I wanted to show you guys. So because it has the rings and the dovetail, what's neat about this, if you end up finding you don't like that daub base uh, type of thing, or maybe you wanna bring that only when you wanna go up north, uh, when uh, you need like less space type of thing, um, or you don't have enough space to carry everything like this, um, you could use it like this as well. Look how easy that is. Boom. Again, with the rings, um, it's very easy you know, because I've heard people say, oh, uh, reflecting telescopes on EQ mounts are just a pain. Uh, look, look how easy it is. I don't know if they realize, all you have to do is loosen the rings, tighten it up, or loosen the rings, twist your tube to whatever, uh, wherever you want to observe it, and then there you go. But again, this tripod, this is a CG4. Now you don't need a CG4 for something this light. Unless maybe you wanna do astrophotography, a CG4 can easily do uh, astrophotography with this guy. Maybe even a CG5 or EQ5. But um, anyway, now it's the proper height anyway. Now I got tracking type of thing. So um, that's what's neat about the Zummel. Comes with the rings and, a, and the bar. And uh, it just makes, uh, you know, a. A dual telescope so if you don't like that thing or you want to maybe keep that somewhere for quick portable viewing this gets you more uh, uh, better viewing better height uh, with tracking slow motion controls you can put a clock drive on it let it track for you um, that's another good feature so just thought I show you guys that before I end the video okay got the accessories here okay it comes with a steel tray which is good comes with uh looks like two kellner eyepieces now okay so kellner is not the greatest it's not the worst it'll get you guys started so if you guys are brand new buying this that will get you started but i would probably say upgrade to maybe super palazzo or palazzo eyepieces uh comes with a red dot finder um which is okay in this price range it's probably better than a five by 24 finder or a six by 30 finder. So it's probably in this price range, that's probably more ideal anyway. So uh, that's it for this guy. Uh, I kind of like it. Uh, it does again have its shortfalls. Uh, again, it's just a height thing you have to figure out. Um, but you know what I'm gonna do since I have this guy? I, uh, since a year and a half ago, I did test the Skywatcher Heritage 130 against this guy. I'm going to actually compare them. Now, I don't have that scope anymore, but I know what it is. I know everything about it. So I'm just going to compare it. What do I like? Uh, what would be my choice? The Skywatcher uh, 130 F5 Heritage or something like this, like the 
a Zumo uh, 130 F5, or uh, same thing, mini dog. So they're both identical. There are some differences, but if you want to see what the differences is, uh, I will do a separate video. This one is just an unboxing of this guy so you guys can see it, but I will do a uh, rundown, a difference, so that way you guys can actually see side by side. Sorry, not side by side, but so you guys can see what the difference would be, and then you guys decide uh, which one you like better. They're similar, but they're, but they're different. Anyway, guys, again, I got this guy just for you guys, so stay tuned. Uh, I will do a comparison side by side of the 2.5 inch. I'll give you my thoughts. And Joe Jaguar out. Like, comment, and subscribe.